uh, welcome to join this APHIS uh, AF uh, module. So this is really a online uh, AF ablation course, training course. So uh, today uh, we are uh, very much pleased and also to have a meeting here to see everyone uh, working online. So uh, today we have Dr. Uh, Park from South Korea, Dr. Lee from Beijing, Dr. Jiang from uh, Zhejiang province, Jiang, uh, China, and also uh, Dr. Yang Gang from Jiangsu province, China. So this uh, AF module uh, training course uh, will be uh, uh, separated by uh, two sessions. One session is the, uh, the, the first session uh, on this Saturday morning, and the other session will be uh, arranged on the uh, uh, Saturday morning of next Saturday. So uh, this, this session title is Today's session title is step-by-step -step approach to do uh, atrial fibrillation uh, ablation, how to generate long-lasting, efficient PV isolation. So uh, today we, you know, we have more and more cases and more and more centers doing atrial fibrillation. So the key problem, the key question is how to have durable PV isolation. I think PV isolation is very uh, essential, is the cornerstone for all types of atrial fibrillation ablation. But in the uh, uh, only days, I think PV isolation, the, uh, the long-term uh, success rate is from Hamburg's experience, the 10-year follow-up, only a one-third of the patient can achieve success. And five-year follow-up, only 50% of the patient can achieve uh, for, uh, the uh, uh, success. So by review, the uh, uh, overall success rate can be uh, elevated to 80% and even to 90%. So today, our aim of training course is try to do permanent or durable PV isolation. So today, I think we have uh, four professors on this topic. So I'm very glad and also welcome all to join our APHIS AF training course. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be the host of this uh, section this morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Yang Gang from uh, Nanjing. Uh, I'm uh, also the, the colleague of uh, Dr. Minun Chen. And uh, uh, Today we have the uh, uh, topic is about uh, uh, atrial fibrillation ablation, how to uh, generate a long standing uh, efficacy of the uh, uh, palm nerve ring isolation. And uh, we will uh, have uh, a different part, uh, how to do the, the palm nerve ring isolation, about the map, uh, about the skills, and how to get the uh, uh, stable and the long-standing endpoint of AF fibrillation. And we have uh, 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 four uh, panelists in our, uh, in our course uh, topic. Uh, I want to introduce our panelists. Uh, the first one is Dr. Li. I have to say Dr. Uh, Li Xuebin from the Peking University <coughs> People's Hospital of China. And uh, uh, he is one of my EP teachers. A uh, lot of things I learned from him. And he is very famous uh, all over China. And uh, he has a lot of students uh, in, in, in China mainland is EP uh, experts. And uh, uh, Dr. Li, could you say something for our... Oh, uh... Dr. Lee's uh, phone is closed. Oh, oh, uh, hello, everyone. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to uh, attending this uh, 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 this meeting and uh, the in these uh, times uh, and in China, the atrial fibrillation conference uh, is the in in this morning and the opening, and I think uh, maybe uh, AIC and uh, the guideline think uh, the PVI 
is important. And another thing uh, include the, uh, uh, the copy, the, the router, and, and LAN, and I think uh, this uh, conference is to be the cl classic. And I think uh, we will discuss this, the PVI. Uh, in, it's important. Uh, we, uh, how we do the PVI, I think uh, we will discuss. Thank you. Okay. okay. And the second panelist is Dr. Zhang and Dr. Zhang Chen Yang from the Zhejiang province, Zhejiang uh, South Hospital. And uh, uh, he is a very rising star EP expert in China. And uh, he also has uh, uh, very strong uh, teams. And uh, our uh, uh, speaker today's uh, speaker is Dr. Park. Uh, Dr. Park is from uh, South Korea and is, uh, he is very experienced uh, uh, in the EP field and uh, also in the atrial uh, fibrillation ablation. And so we uh, invite him to introduce his experience and uh, give us very uh, uh, good uh, topic and introduce Dr. Park. Hi, thank you. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction, uh, Dr. Yang. I'm happy to participate in this session and it is my great honor to uh, present my technique, ablation technique to the audience and also have a uh, chance to discuss about the uh, most one of the most important technique uh, for the AF population with the experienced uh, Chinese colleagues. Okay, so I would like to share my screen. Uh, I generated the video clip and uh, let's discuss uh, about the technique uh, uh, intermittently with panelists and at the at the end of their, uh, each session, we have discussion time so the audience can ask a question by a chatting window. Okay, uh, because this session is for the uh, early career of EP physicians, I would like to start from the how to handle the catheter movement, uh, make a good contact and stable catheter. Uh, you need to move catheter very, very slowly. Generally, I would uh, recommend to my fellows move catheter one millimeter and weight three beat cardiac beats. Ablation procedure is mainly done by left hand, not right hand. Right hand is very crude movement, deflect down, curve up, and clockwise contour rotation. But if you move to the, the target area, you can use right hand. If you manipulate catheter for the uh, proper contact and precise mapping and ablation, the left hand is more important. So uh, watch my hand, use third and fourth finger, grab around the schist, and the thumb finger and index finger, grab the catheter. And the clockwise and counterclockwise talk was done by like this. So left hand is more. Because the curvature to left upper primary vein and the right side upper primary vein is easy because it is natural curve. So if you put the, just push the cat, grid catheter, uh, push, push, if it is not the appendage side, uh, it naturally going to the left upper primary vein. But make sure if the catheter tip moves directly to appendage, the tip of catheter did not uh, move outside of the cardiac silhouette and the under fluoroscopy. So uh, always you try to gently clockwise tool and push the catheter and uh, you can put your catheter inside the left side pulmonary vein. Another tip is you need to watch the electrogram signal. Appendage signal is broader and big amplitude. If you see the broader and the big amplitude, you should not push catheter. It is appendage, not the left upper pulmonary vein. And uh, if you move to the left, right upper pulmonary vein, just clockwise talk, whole system, and your catheter will move to the right side. So if you curve down, clockwise talk, curve down, clockwise talk, make a posterior inferior drag, and just push the catheter. If you are lucky, you can put your catheter inside the left inferior pulmonary vein. But sometimes, if pulmonary vein is flat, a very uh, flat and uh, the narrow diameter, it is hard to push the, uh, the grid catheter inside. In that case, make a big curve like this, 
and counterclockwise torque directed post your wall and push, push, push. And if the tip of your grid cat grid catheter is just inside of all left inferior pulmonary vein osteum, you can just keep the same position of shoes and push the catheter slowly and open the curve. Push catheter and open the curve. And you can get the left inferior pulmonary vein. Okay, from right superior pulmonary vein to right inferior pulmonary vein, uh, imagine where is the, your, the, the patient right inferior pulmonary vein located? It is more posteriorly directed. So if you want to move your catheter posterior direction and from right superior pulmonary vein to inferior vein, deflect down and counterclockwise toe and direct posteriorly. And then you move to your fluoroscopy to the RAO view. And you can see where is your catheter position, tip directed right inferior pulmonary vein. Sometimes it is very difficult, especially in smaller left atrial size, then you should curve down, sharp, make a cur sharp curve, even this kind of sharp curve, and direct the right position to right inferior pulmonary vein also, and open the curve. And then catheter is moved inside the right side pulmonary vein with this uh, position. It's not uh, easy to put the inferior vein, inferior pulmonary vein engagement. Uh, you need to watch your angiogram, your tube, at the beginning of the procedure, and imagine where is your the patient's uh, inferior pulmonary vein located, and probably you will succeed. Thank you very much. So when we start left atrial geometry with uh, H degree catheter or the uh, ring catheter, uh, please make sure your catheter movement should be very very slow. Are you? Uh, uh, well, the, whatever the rhythm status, uh, it is the sinus rhythm or the atrial fibrillation, I uh, opened the recording the uh, electron voltage map together because during atrial fibrillation, you can get the fractionate map with this automatic uh, module and the fractionate, fractionation map uh, could provide you with some location of a complex uh, electrogram. So uh, I usually start map with uh, left atrium proper and the posterior wall, roof, posterior wall, and anterior wall, and the septal side. Then uh, I start to map the, uh, each pulmonary vein uh, separately. Right side, right inferior pulmonary vein, left upper pulmonary vein, left inferior pulmonary vein. Then move to the left atrial appendage. And uh, uh, of course, the mapping of the left left isthmus is also important. Please make sure this the video so speed is um, at the time. Uh, faster than twice the, uh, of acquiring the electron speed. And, uh, so uh, please do not remove the catheter uh, with multi so fast. catheter. Then I change, exchange the catheter to the ablation catheter and uh, uh, check the location of the secondary branches of a pulmonary vein uh, to generate a better uh, CT merging. So you can see the, this kind of uh, small uh, white spears, which means the fractionated potential locations. So even during the atrial fibrillation status, it is quite easy to uh, find out where is the fractionate potential exists. And then the, after getting the uh, general geometry with ring catheter or H degree catheter, then uh, I exchange to the, the ablation catheter to check out their secondary branch. Secondary branch. Yeah. yeah. See. <coughs> Ablation catheter one by one. Let's give it over and see. Stop. Yeah. So better the geometry and the better CT merging. Upper branch. The second branch location is sometimes very helpful. Uh, after uh, getting the geometry, 3D geometry of uh, the patients, uh, you need to give uh, enough time to the FCE to make a fusion process and trimming uh, of the left atrial geometry. Uh, don't be in rush. Uh, if the uh, trimming and the CT merge is incorrect, you will uh, spend more time to get the proper uh, uh, result outcome. So give them, give FC enough time to make a very sophisticated 
and the detailed. I usually, during FC generating the CT merge, I do the right side ablation uh, after take out the uh, transatashis right atrium, and I generate the SVC septalinear ablation. It is ablation from SVC tip to uh, upper posterior limbus of fossa valley, and I usually deliver <coughs> 20 to 30 second, uh, 25 watt, uh, 20 second in each point. And then move to the cable trackers of the isthmus and uh, try to make and uh, generate the uh, uh, CTI. Yeah, next step is cable trackers of isthmus. Uh, Probably some some of the audience uh, doesn't agree uh, why the, the, we need right atrial ablation for the patient with atrial fibrillation. But uh, uh, I just uh, the, the talking about their uh, general practice, our protocol in my laboratory. So we will discuss about uh, this kind of right side ablation uh, at the discussion uh, time. So after the giving uh, the CTI ablation, uh, still the Rhythm is atrial fibrillation status. So after the finishing the PV isolation, make it sinus rhythm, then uh, we will recheck the uh, bidirectional block at the end of the procedure. Okay, this is SV septal line and CTI ablation lines. And still the FC is emerging the uh, 3D geometry with CT scan. And then, Before starting the uh, PB, isolate, PB isolation procedure, I would like to recommend to exchange your catheter with the ring catheter or the H degree catheter and check the uh, location of a PB antrum one by one. Because even though the, the uh, magnetic sensor they keep the uh, uh, proper location and proper position of geometry, sometimes patient move or the sometimes uh, uh, by deep uh, respiration uh, tilt uh, your ge geometry. So uh, to make sure the proper geometry, uh, I would like to strongly recommend that you uh, check the uh, antrum, PB antrum position one by one. And then you can start uh, safe RF population and smooth RF population. Your chest is inside of a left atrium. And the okay, so, uh, so far the, uh, I explained about the, how to map the uh, pulmonary vein and also how to generate the 3D map uh, before the ablating uh, pulmonary veins. So I'd like to, to refer the microphone to Dr. Yang and Dr. Lee uh, to discuss about their uh, mapping technique uh, before the AF ablation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Park. The first part is about uh, how to uh, reconstruct, uh, reconstruct a good uh, geometry for our ablation. And I noticed you use uh, a HD grid catheter to, to do the, the, the geometry. I have to say, uh, we have very uh, few experience because this pro product have not been launched in China, mainland. So I, I have seen the, the, the geometry is very beautiful. I agree with you, a very uh, good geometry is uh, a first step, first important step for uh, our uh, young fellows to do the pulmonary vein isolation first. And uh, I have uh, I've noticed you, you said you, the sequence you, um, uh, manipulate the the caster is first you do the uh, uh, left atrium body first, and then you uh, create the the pulmonar vein, uh, uh, the four veins, the second step. Uh, but in our uh, workflow, I create the pulmonar vein first, and then to the left uh, our uh, atrium body, and. Uh, uh, we we only have the the, the circular map, uh, circular map. Do you have uh, any feeling about the circular map? Uh, have uh, any uh, uh, compared with the HD grid? HD grid can uh, recreate the geometry faster. 
Uh, or more precise? I don't think so. HD grid is more accurate and the high density map and also the voltage map, the, the outcome is more precise reflecting the uh, histology of their mm -hmm. uh, patients. But uh, I don't think it is not a good idea to use the HD grid character to shorten the uh, mapping time. And also uh -huh. the, uh, with the Navix precision version, it doesn't matter to map the PB first and the uh, LA later, but the, I'm uh, a little old fashioned uh, because I, I have been using Navix machine for uh, longer than 20 years. So the previous version, uh, always there is uh, some force space between in between pulmonary vein and the appendage or some area, the folded area. So that's why the, uh, we generate the LA first and uh, during uh, pulmonary vein mapping, if there's force space, the FC they delete at some points. Yeah. Even though precision has uh, the magnetic sensor guided uh, the uh, mapping uh, uh, technology, but mm -hmm. uh, I think it is still not uh, perfect. So still there's some the force spaces. If there's force spaces, sometimes the uh, procedure very very difficult. So I still keeping the same way the old version of Navix. So LA first, then the primary vein mapping later. Mm -hmm. I've noticed you always do the CT uh, fusion with uh, the geometry mm -hmm. for all the patients with yes. uh, the no exception. The yeah. The first reason is uh, to exclude the left atrial appendage. We don't do uh -huh. transesophageal echo in every single patient uh -huh. because CT is um, more sensitive than the T, uh, more specific uh, for the appendage thrombus detection uh, than T. So if there's no thrombus on the anticoagulation, we don't need the transesophageal echocardiography. It is very the hard procedure for the patient. And uh, if it is uh, persistent atrial fibrillation or the high risk patient, we put the intracardiac echo uh, to examine the appendage if, uh, during oh. the procedure. So that, that is first the reason for the CT scan uh, before the procedure. And second one is sometimes uh, we lose the, the uh, secondary branch or the, some specific uh, specialized special the, uh, atrial geometry. Uh, in some, for example, uh, there is sometimes uh, unknown the branch and the roof of the atrium. So that's why the, we check the CT scan. Uh, so. And actually, third the reason is for the research purpose. But uh, yes, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, the, the fusion uh, occurrence uh, based on the, the FCE. So uh, he should know where the, 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 the uh, land market for the which part, yes. which point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, should fusion with uh, CT. I so think do you? Experience to FC is very, very, very important for yes. the procedure. Yeah. So sure. don't don't rush them. To give them enough time to make a good geometry and make a good fusion with CT. So that's why I the, uh, I spend time, some time to apply the right right and I want to know uh, in in the next part you were introduced about so why you do the right side before. Uh, when the FCE do the fusion, yeah, you do the right side ablation. Actually, yeah. the, we already the, the published the randomized clinical trial to comparing the SV septal linear ablation. The mm -hmm. main reason is there there is third fat pad in between SVT septal side and aorta, mm -hmm. and uh, more most of uh, the parasympathetic nerve ganglia accumulate uh -huh. in that okay. area and branch to the heart. So uh -huh. even though it is not possible to eliminate all, all the certain fat pad nerve endings, mm -hmm. at least we cut off some of the nerve endings during SVD septal linear ablation. So the, after ablation, we check the, the heart rate variability after certain months of AF catheter ablation. And as we see, the, the septal linear ablation group shows a much reduced parasympathetic tone and a much better, uh, significantly better rhythm outcome in our study. For the CTI ablation, uh, because about 20% uh, of atrial fibrillation is associated with atrial flutter, so that is one of the reasons. 
And uh, there is another parasympathetic big ganglia uh, at the base of heart, so crux area. So this, during CTI ablation, we also they cut off some nerve, but there, uh, still there is uh, some controversy. CTI ablation is uh, uh, essential or not during the AF ablation procedures. Uh, thank you. So uh, other uh, question or discussion, Dr. Lee? Okay, so Dr. John is not here. And uh, let's move on, Dr. Park. Okay, sure. Okay, let's move on to the uh, pulmonary vein isolation procedure. Uh, nowadays, I'm using the high power shoot duration ablation, so we will discuss about that uh, briefly. And uh, before the before the presentation of live cases, I would like to uh, uh, mention about the how to make a better contact and stable catheter uh, contact during PD isolation. Catheter is here. To make a better contact and good contact force, it is better to uh, maintain the short distance between the tip of sheets and catheter tip. If it is like this, catheter is protruded outside of sheets, the contact force is reduced. So if you can, it's better to shoot distance between shoot tip and catheter tip and try to ablate anterior and posterior like this. If you want to move down to left side pulmonary vein, upper pulmonary vein to the lower pulmonary vein, if you pull back your shoot, catheter tip is downward. So in this time, you need to push catheter, pull back the shoot make a better contact to left inferior pulmonary vein. And for the anterior ridge of left side inferior pulmonary vein, sometimes it is better to make a sharp curve and for the good contact. Okay, and when you move to the, want to move to the anterior side ablation, uh, imagine this is the, the anterior part of a pulmonary vein, this is posterior part of pulmonary vein. If you make a counterclockwise torque, make so you can imagine this is a left side upper pulmonary vein, left side low pulmonary vein. You are watching the heart outside of heart to inside. Of. The back side is inside of heart. The, the, my hand is outside of heart. So imagine the, how the catheter directed. Contact, you can make a contact and anterior pulmonary vein, clockwise throw and posterior work contact, okay? So imagine how to make a good contact by clockwise torque and counterclockwise torque. So for the left side pulmonary vein, counterclockwise torque make a better contact to entry ridge. Clockwise torque make a posterior contact ridge. Okay, now you can imagine this is anterior side of a right side pulmonary vein and this is posterior side of a right side pulmonary vein. So you can imagine you, you are watching the uh, right side pulmonary vein inside of. So it is opposite direction. So you are watching the, the right side pulmonary vein from inside of heart, inside of a left atrium. So right side pulmonary vein, if you try to make a clockwise torque, make a good contact to anterior wall, counterclockwise torque, counterclockwise torque, make a contact to posterior wall. But the, when you ablate the posterior aspects of a right side pulmonary vein, sometimes it is make a good uh, catheter stability because catheter is almost perpendicular, perpendicular to the wall. So in this point, imagine you're the transeptal puncture site and the right side uh, posterior PB antrum. It is almost the perpendicular direction. So sometimes it is difficult to make a good contact sometimes the catheter is away from the atrial wall, sometimes push more and the risk of complication. So, and uh, another difficult part is if you try to ablate the uh, roof of a pulmonary vein, she is already inside PB. So in this time, it is very difficult to make a uh, proper ablation in the upper pulmonary vein and up, up left side of the pulmonary vein and right side of the pulmonary vein. In this time, you can push catheter inside and deflect down a little bit and 
just put the catheter inside the PV and pull back sheets and make a torque and generate this type of a second curve. Like this. Okay? For the right side primary vein of roof, also opposite direction, you can make contact like this. So generating second curve is useful to make a uh, roof of both pumps. Okay, now uh, let's start the PV isolation. I usually start from the left side of a pulmonary vein and uh, anterior ridge because this uh, location is the most important part of a PV isolation and the high recurrence in this area. Uh, as I told you there, during the, the explanation, the teaching video, uh, the distance between the shoot tip and ablation tip uh, is important. If, if it is too far away, the contact force is reduced. If it's too short, sometimes you make uh, to too high temperature and risk of complication. So adjust uh, the contact force is uh, very important. Even though the tactic head catheter or the smart touch catheter can monitor the contact force, but the, I prefer to use this the, uh, uh, flexibility catheter because flexibility catheter generate a, a bigger lesion and, uh, and the temperature thermal sensor is located at the tip of the catheter. So even though we cannot believe the uh, tip temperature during the irrigate during using the irrigated tip cat, uh, ablation catheter, but uh, some, some degree, uh, this the temperature uh, reflects the tip temperature uh, when I use the uh, flexibility catheter. So I prefer to, it is my favorite catheter to ablate. And uh, nowadays I'm using the 50 to 60 watt hyper short duration ablation. And with the 50 watt ablation, uh, in the anterior aspects of a uh, pulmonary vein, I usually maintain uh, 10 to 15 seconds, but the, it depends on the patient body size and gender. If the old lady with small size heart, I reduce the duration of ablation less than uh, five seconds sometimes. So far, I, I use the high partial duration ablation uh, more than 300 cases, but the, uh, so far, uh, in, in my experience, is pretty good and safe. But the posterior aspects, uh, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, Dr. Lee, uh, do you use the high partial duration technology for your ablation procedure? Uh, yes, uh, my uh, our, our centers uh, uh, will use uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 power, uh, 50 power and uh, valve two, and uh, we we use the independence. Uh, we depend the independence, uh, and uh, if we found that the dependence decreased uh, is uh, uh, ninety nine percent, we will stop uh, the ablation. So usually, how long do you stay on one point uh, when you use fifty watt ablation? If we do use the uh, anterior, we know we, we will use the LS, LSI is uh, um, uh, 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 five, 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 LSI uh, and five is five. Mm -hmm. If we use the, the post uh, well, and the post will, we will maybe is the near uh, the uh, near is near, we will, we will use the uh, um, uh, five or second, and maybe it's very, very fast. We will to do, and uh, we can, we will uh, 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 do the the not 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 con uh, continue, and uh, we will point the point and uh, mm. and uh, okay. Okay, the uh, Dr. Yang, the could you share your technology for the PB isolation? Uh, is if you use a high partial duration ablation. So this, you, you introduce about your uh, experience, you use a uh, high power uh, ablation, but uh, this skills is not uh, used in our center. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the anterior wall, the, the highest power I set at uh, 40 watts, but mm -hmm. we haven't with the, the uh, flexibility, this caster, we only have the uh, cool flex and uh, the, the selling flow is setting at uh, 10 uh, millimeter per I think high even though the high pressure duration ablation make a surface burn, not a deep burn, and uh, broad uh, legion generation, but the left side the posture wall is still very dangerous area because there are many critical structures contact with LA posterior wall. It's okay, uh, before moving to the uh, posterior aspects of left pulmonary vein, I would like to emphasize to ablate this carina area. If you see the, 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 the pathology uh, articles, uh, muscle bundle around anterior aspects of uh, left side pulmonary vein is very thick, very thick. If, uh, moreover, if you ablate the more anterior side, it's even thicker than the osteo side. So uh, you need to, uh, so you need a sophisticated ablation in this anterior carina of uh, left side pulmonary vein. In, on the right side, both posterior and anterior side of carina is very important to ablate complete isolation. So the, we use 50 watt to 60 watt for this area. Uh, even though the, there was a the recent uh, publication in Europe, 70 watt and the five to 10 second ablation is uh, more efficient than the usual RF energy, but I do not recommend to 70 watt nowadays because I check, I gradually increase the power from 40 watt, 50 watt, and 60 watt. Sometimes I see a small chart, even we are using the, the irrigated catheter. So if you use the high power of the short duration ablation, I would like to recommend to increase the, the irrigated flow rate. And then the next uh, step is most dangerous part of AF ablation. LA posterior one. Especially esophagus, aorta, and vertebra. So uh, when I try to ablate the posterior wall, I usually uh, deliver less than 50 watt and uh, left it less than uh, 10 seconds. And uh, if patient uh, complain pain, I stop burning and move to another position. And uh, I think the monitoring of esophageal temperature is this mandatory. Is if you do not monitor asphagia temperature, do not use high power in the post, on the posterior wall. And also, even though you use, uh, you monitor the uh, asphagia temperature, if the temperature tip is, uh, there is a distance discrepancy between your ablation catheter and the temperature tip, uh, this temperature uh, does not uh, provide you the proper information. So. Uh, your catheter to be is away from the asphagia temperature probe. Uh, you need to ask your nurses and technicians move to the, this asphagia temperature close to their uh, ablation uh, the point. And uh, I usually use cutoff value of uh, asphagia temperature is 38.4 degree Celsius. If it is the going up, the do not ablate. Just move another point. So. I recommend to you the ablate the posterior wall uh, uh, stochastically, not the linear the continuous ablation, to give her a chance to cooling down the asphalt temperature. So move at this point and other point comes comes and goes and finish up the ablation. And also, if there is a very small potential uh, is recorded on the tip of ablation catheter, move the catheter uh, rapidly to another point. So in this point, the temperature is over 39. So I move on to the another other point. So like a frog jump, uh, I ablate the posterior aspects of a pulmonary, the left side antrum, the from here to away here, here, because the we need to give a chance to cooling down of so increase the asphalt temperature. So during the cooling period, the asphalt temperature, I uh, generally uh, added uh, linear ablation along the posterior aspects of appendage. As I told you, the, there is folded area between left side pulmonary vein and appendage. And uh, in that area, the muscle thickness quite very, uh, quite thick, like a funnel. So in the folded area, all those uh, folded areas are filled by muscular uh, structures. So 
I ablated, added a linear ablation and the posterior aspect of uh, appendage. Another reason for the posterior appendage, uh, LA appendage linear ablation is to targeting the ligament marshal. Ligament marshal branches many their nerve fibers to not only pulmonary vein aspect, but also appendage aspects. So that's why uh, I give her the uh, same high power ablation uh, short duration along the uh, appendage posture aspects. But um, please make sure if put uh, push your ablation catheter a little more, uh, free wall size of a lactate appendage it shows has very thin uh, musculature uh, with a lot of trivulation. So don't ablate uh, inside of appendage, just uh, Appendi ostium, the posture aspects is uh, my target. Okay, let's move. Let's move back to the posture aspect of uh, atrium. Left side antrum again, and ablate uh, with monitoring the aspirated temperature. And then, okay. I'll show one more time. The roof aspects of uh, pulmonary vein is hard to uh, approach it because schist is already inside the pulmonary vein with natural curve. In that case, I already told you, uh, make a second curve ablation. So see, watch the their, their fluoroscopic image. Okay, push the ablation catheter inside of uh, pulmonary vein and twist the schist, make a second curve. And then your ablation target is matched to the uh, entra area. If you make a second curve, don't try to uh, change the catheter position and uh, torque, make a torque on the catheter. Just push in torque with schist not catheter alone. So I think this area uh, include the septal pulmonary bundle. It is a very thick and important bundle. Sometimes epicardial the connection uh, make uh, the, the PV isolation procedure very difficult. So it is important to give uh, enough energy. Sometimes patient feel pain in this area and the vagal response, okay. and finish up the left side of PV anthroblation. Then I generally give a, a crinal line with 30 watt, very short duration. If there is no potential, I move uh, just to checking the PV potential. So regardless of uh, the- When you ablate the right, right posture. Uh... Uh, you should watching the ablation signal continuously. So if there is no signal, or very small potential, so you can move faster. But if it's huge signal, you can come back and, and give a more ablation, uh, ablation energy. Keep okay. antrum. Uh, you can Let's imagine the, right the catheter contact direction because transeptal side and uh, your target side, right posterior antrum, is almost perpendicular direction. So it is very difficult to make a good contact. If you push a little bit. Uh, patient, the uh, contact pressure is too high. If you remove, you pull back your catheter a little bit, the contact is became very poor. So it is very uh, important to push and pull back your catheter continuously and make a better contact. And also, this area contact with posterior wall, posterior uh, media mediastinum, patient complain pain uh, quite often. So uh, please give her the enough time to ablate the right side, posterior side, antrum ablation. Okay. So some patient has a very folded structure in this area, which means the vertebra, aorta, or some other structure pushing the posterior wall. In those patients, if you push the uh, catheter too much, patient always complain pain and hard to ablate. So in this area, you need to rotate your fluoroscopy to RAO view 
and uh, comparing the angiogram you took before and where is the PBL osteum area. Because the musculature of the inferior pulmonary vein, both sides, the inferior pulmonary vein is very shallow. If you give a high power bone slightly deep side, you have a high risk, high chance of, to generate the PB stenosis. So always check the area view and uh, uh, confirm where is your catheter tip comparing the angiogram uh, image. Okay, bottom of all right, pulmonary vein, right into the pulmonary vein. I move a little faster here. Okay, the bottom of right into the pulmonary vein. I keep same energy, high pressure duration energy. And uh, this part is easy and safe area, the septal aspects of uh, right side pulmonary vein. If you make generate a transceptor puncture to posterior to high side, sometimes it is difficult to ablate this area because the transceptor hole is here. It's hard to make a good contact. So in this point, you need to rotate your catheter and schist clockwise all together. And uh, please make sure your schist is inside of uh, the transceptor side. Sometimes schist is outside of uh, uh, left atrium, only catheter is inside. In that case, even though you rotate the, your the schist vigorously, you can make a good contact catheter tip uh, uh, move away from the endocardial surface. This is the easiest part, and this is also important part, crina. Anterior and posterior carina of a right side pulmonary vein is important point. You need to give an enough burn. And then root part of a right side pulmonary vein is also difficult, one of the difficult parts during PB isolation. And uh, I usually try to push the catheter highest point and oblate more, but make sure your catheter uh, tip location is proper or not. Because catheter is a straight uh, forward the roof of uh, endocardial surface and the temperature tip is a little away from the catheter tip and uh, sometimes uh, it's high risk of tamponade in this area. So don't push too much in this position. It's very dangerous, okay? So this sphere suggests the impedance dropping and the location of ablation site, uh, it is quite uh, useful for the safety. I don't trust this uh, color change 100%, uh, but uh, at least if the color change to uh, chocolate color, that means that there's uh, some lesion formation. And if you give more energy, it has a risk of uh, complication. And actual the rooftop is here. This area is rooftop of right side pulmonary vein. So I push the catheter inside the pulmonary vein, curve down and rotate schist, make her this second curve, S curve, and push the schist gently and make a good contact and fill up the roof side. All right. So even though in this point, the patient respirate vigorously, catheter stability, they change, but they take your time and uh, give a RF energy, sophisticated technique and fill up all the gaps. And finally, uh, successfully generated uh, right side antrum ablation. And the like, same uh, way to the left side antrum, antrum ablation, I give a crying ablation. With 30 watt, 30 watt and uh, watching the signal, ablation signal inside. If there is no signal, I move fast. If there is signal, 
I give a little more energy to conform. The enteral ablation was successful now. Okay. In isolation was. Okay. So this is finish up of a pulmonary vein isolation. Uh, we conducted the pulmonary vein isolation with high power shoot duration ablation successfully and smoothly, and uh, it took about 30 minutes. It's quite fast and efficient ablation procedure. After PVA isolation, uh, please make sure uh, your pulmonary vein is completely isolated uh, by using ring catheter or HD grid catheter one by one. But uh, generally, we, the guidelines recommend over 30 minutes wait because there is some the acute reconnection. And some people use adenosine injection to make sure there's complete isolation. But uh, uh, I do not use adenosine uh, uh, now they, in my lab. Uh, and also, uh, during the waiting period, I try to uh, conduct isoprotein provocation and uh, to uh, track the extra pulmonary vein triggers. It takes about uh, 30 minutes. And then lastly, we can recheck the pulmonary vein potential. If there is a the reconnected pulmonary vein potential, we need to give more energy. So after PV isolation, uh, I exchanged it. I, I, I use just single transeptal puncture, and uh, I exchanged the ablation catheter with ring catheter, H degree catheter, and uh, check the pulmonary vein potential. If it is well isolated, I generated voltage map for the uh, potential the widow ablation cases. I always try to, to compare the substrate. Uh, at their time of uh, widow ablation, and uh, also the uh, research purpose. And some people, they finish up the case in this situation, but uh, I always try to confirm uh, whether there is XPB uh, trigger or not by ice pretrial, uh provocation. So this is my uh, PB isolation technique, and uh, we need to discuss about the PB isolation technique with panelists and chairperson. Dr. Yang, please. Hi, Dr. Park. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I dropped off from the internet for a while. And uh, there are some questions from our uh, audience uh, about mm -hmm. your uh, uh, section. And uh, uh, how about the automark? Do you use it in your uh, PVI routinely? Automark. Automark? Yeah, automark. So the, the, the during the PV mapping that I always use autom automap module. So I already shows the, the before and after PV isolation, I checked the, the voltage map. Everything was done with, by the automap uh, technique. Yes, that, that is auto automap technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is another uh, function in the system is automark during the ablation, the leashing. Uh, when you do the ablation, there is a tag uh, were uh, uh, produced by the, the, the system automatically. So the, or the leashing is added by the FCE. Could you please specify the what kind of module among the, there is a many function in automap module. Yeah, there, so, uh, there is a question. Uh, during the ablation, the leashing targets will be added on the surface of the geometry. Sometimes it's added by the FCE. They can add the leashing tag on the oh, surface. Oh, I, I, I'm watching the boss. So the, you mean the sphere, the tagging, right? Like the mm -hmm. VG tag in Kato module. It is uh, automatically uh, tagged by the, if uh, I set the, the within this three millimeter range of catheter movement, and away the weighted the remain in the same position three seconds, and uh, there's an automark. 
And uh, if the impedance drop uh, over 10% of a baseline, it changed color to chocolate color. So it is all automatic, but the FC also the tag the location because uh, I don't trust the computer 100%. So I the, trust the, the, my the FC more. So I compare both sides. So your auto mark is uh, based on uh, what's your setting based on the, the duration of ablation or based on the impedance drop or based both. on uh, both what? color change is impedance Force. based. Yeah, uh -huh. color change is impedance based, and the location of a uh, sphere mark is uh, uh, how long the cathode tape remain in the same point, uh, how much it moves. Yeah. Okay. Another question is about uh, how is your comment on the leasing transmutability and the long-term durability of high power, high power and short duration? Oh yeah. Actually, the, uh, I have to compare the previous the conventional ablation with 35 watt and 25 watt. Uh, previous our my the publication the 35 watt is much better than 25 watt. It was uh, almost the uh, eight years ago paper, uh, but uh, we need to compare that. But uh, currently we uh, measure the PV potential isolation rate at the redo uh, ablation procedure. Uh, even in the, the worldwide famous uh, the lab, it is the, the patient with all four pulmonary vein uh, were isolated state at the redo mapping is uh, less than uh, 25, or sometimes less than 10%. But the, in my lab, it is about the 30, uh, 38% uh, pulmonary veins. 38% of read patients were all isolated pulmonary vein. Uh, nowadays, cryoablation is interesting, but the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the uh, what, what is his name? The uh, German uh, group's uh, outcome at the read mapping about the uh, all pulmonary the risk the rate of uh, all pulmonary vein isolation is about the 27 percent so still our pb isolation technology is limited but the, as i introduce the, okay i would like to show this powerpoint slide Briefly, yeah. In this paper, that they use 70 watt, Kotmeyer, it is a German group, and uh, they use a flexibility catheter, and the outcome was better than standard uh, ablation mm -hmm. uh, procedure. But there, I tried, I would like to try the 70 watt, but uh, uh, scary. So still I'm using the 60 watt maximum. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then uh, slowly, I'm trying to increase the power. Okay. Uh, Professor Lee. Lee. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can you give us some comments about the uh, high power and the short duration of lacing? Um, I, I think our center, um, every, every patient, so we use the uh, two sheets uh, into the lab trail, and uh, we will puncture two. Uh, we do use. Uh, uh, the antis sheets, antis sheets is uh, the kind of the every every patient use the uh, pressure pressure test uh, mm. and uh, mm. and uh, the past year we used the uh, uh, cupli and used the uh, um, plus the antis and I think antis sheets is for the the loop the, the loop of the it is very easy, and I think, but because you we found that we use the the uh, analysis and plus the pressure test, I think uh, the pressure maybe will will contact its uh, stability, and I think mm. stability maybe we do uh, use the five fifty power uh, fifty volt volt fifty volt. We think maybe we will use uh, the short time. And then mm. with dangerous because I use uh, we use the anterior or oh, no no problem but I use the posterior therapy so we will uh, de decrease the 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 the, the, the second. Okay. Mm. 
Okay. Mm. So Dr. Lee, in your center, uh, you, you introduced about the experience for you, just for you or for a young fellow, the new uh, EP doctors, they also use this uh, skill uh, product to us and settings. Uh, yeah, the students. Uh, and, um, maybe the, because my, my doctor, um, our, our doctor, Duan Jiangbo, uh, she's very like uh, use the, <laughs> the high power. And uh, the, maybe the young, young doctors, uh, I, 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 I worried about, and I will, I will think no in no high high power, but uh, mm. because the high power maybe is uh, faster, is uh, short time maybe, but uh, if you, your test uh, the impedance, uh, um, maybe the impedance is uh, uh, the the first five seconds uh, is the decrease the very fast we will stop. And uh, as and I think uh, maybe the young doctor uh, I I worried about, but uh, the doctor Duan Jiangbo to do more the uh, 50, 50 more 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 patients, uh, mm -hmm. he have experience and uh, we he do the ablation the the one circle maybe uh, ten minutes and the two ten circles minutes. thirty minutes <laughs> and use the yeah. analyst. Uh, uh, and uh, the very stability the other uh, maybe this the uh, short time to do mm -hmm. the the point okay i completely so agree you, with, uh, with dr professor lee's opinion the, we need to compare the risk of, uh, and benefit of new technology uh, if the the mechanism of high, high pressure duration is uh, uh, ablation uh, is preceded by the main resistive energy heating surface heating rather than a conductive energy. That means it can reduce the risk of uh, collateral damage and generate a uh, uh, big lesion in the endocardially. But in other words, some, uh, you, I, I have a lot of interest in about the autonomic nerve activity for the initiation and the maintenance phase of fibrillation. The cardiac nerve exists at epicardial, subepicardial surface of uh, atrium. So, if we burn, if we, we get the PV isolation very quickly, short time by high power ablation, but the, we cannot uh, get the epicardial ablation, epicardial side ablation, including the uh, ganglionate plexus enough uh, time. So we need to uh, watch the, the outcome of a high power saturation ablation. But the, so far, I don't think the, it is not that dangerous uh, if we limit the uh, ablation duration uh, and ablation power. I rarely hear the steam pop during high power ablation procedure, but uh, uh, I don't think it is uh, the more frequent than the conventional ablation technique with certified one. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Park, do you use Angelus in your routine practice? And it is possible, but the uh, Agilis shears is uh, more expensive than the conventional SO1 shears. So I do not use Agilis shears routine uh, practice, but uh, definitely Agilis shears is, uh, yeah, can uh, make a, a better uh, fish contact with during ablation procedure. Yeah. Let me ask to the Professor Yang and Professor Lee, uh, it is troubleshooting issue. During PV isolation, sometimes patients move, cough, yeah. and the yeah. geometry is tilted. Yeah. It is very, very annoying uh, the <laughs> situation. So how do you solve the situations? I think uh, we do the, uh, the short time to do. We will, maybe we will um, inhabit uh, the, the, these things. Uh, and we think uh, is uh, the, uh, the advanced uh, the coronary centers uh, maybe is a very is a very deep the coronary and um, maybe we we why we do uh, like the uh, high power maybe it's uh, the the short the we will do the short time maybe we will not move move movement and uh, uh, if we do the patients if we plus the two uh, two uh, uh, puncture the the, the septal. And I think the 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 valve is a stop and uh, isolation. We will see is very uh, easy. And if we use the signal, uh, the, 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 the signal, the puncture, 
we maybe we will, will do the point of uh, every point is a very 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 better we will uh, the re re uh, retest uh, with we if the patients uh, you There is some technical yeah. problem. Yeah, Dr. Lee, some Yes, Dr. Park, and mm -hmm. uh, we also met uh, problems, and uh, uh, the, the patient will have some shifting of the geometry. And uh, we have to, sometimes if the shifting is not so far, we just uh, remove the, the, the reference caster, mm -hmm. the CS caster. Uh, our CS caster is uh, always uh, uh, Placed the through the, the femoral vein, uh, not from the uh, superior vena cavi, and we through the femoral vein, and we will use uh, the the sheath with the locked. We can lock the sheath, and sometimes uh, we we advance the, the CS caster uh, into the CS and uh, open the curve and uh, makes the catheter without any tension. And that uh, can reduce the uh, movement. But uh, still, there, there is still a problem. The patient will have the, sometimes mm. will have the, the movement. We have to recreate the geometry again. Yeah, that's so. right. So CS yeah. catheters uh, moves a lot. So yeah. the, uh, Five or six years of, until five or six years ago, I use always use the aortic the reference. The, put the reference Your, catheter in the aortic uh, root. Uh, it yeah. is not that dangerous, but the, nowadays I try to reduce the hospital staying uh, period of patient. So I use only two venous puncture. That's why the, I'm using single transept approach. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, 14 French tripod uh, for the mapping uh, three catheters and uh, mm -hmm. another uh, long shears for single transeptor and uh, LA ablation. So the, sometimes the CS catheter move a slot and they make a uh, big trouble during the ablation procedure. I, the, nowadays I'm using the, the patch mm -hmm. reference instead of CS reference. Patch and, reference, uh, yeah. yeah. If the patient's respiration is too vigorous and patch reference doesn't work, then I exchange that switch to the, uh, the CS reference. So, but still the, sometimes they can make yeah. a, the trouble. And they can, if it is the tilted, the, the geometry is too serious, I uh, generate a quick uh, geometry again. And mm. uh, my FC is very experienced and he merges the, with CT quickly. Sometimes it's oh. faster and the safer. I've noticed you have used uh, used the, the the precision system, right? Yeah. Precision system with magnetic uh, uh, guided the catheter. Yes. Uh, is it that is quite, it is quite the, helpful. It is quite helpful, but the, if patient move on the table, it doesn't work because the the magnetic sensor is the the beneath the patient back. So if patient move or the respiratory vigorously, there's no way to correct it. Dr. Park, uh, another question is about uh, carina ablation. Do you have uh, some experience in this special place, carina? Uh, carina ablation, I, I do the carina ablation in every single case uh, because the, there's some, the, sometimes there is a small potential around along the carina and I eliminate them all during the ablation. Also, I suspect the my enteral ablation was successful not during carina ablation. The reason why I do, do, try to do carina, keep continue carina ablation is, I my old paper suggested if the in patient with recurred uh, pulmonary vein trigger, uh, almost every case recurrent pulmonary. Uh, uh, primary vein trigger is ipsilateral side. So there is communication between upper and lower primary vein. So that's why they're rational to I ablate the primary vein. Okay. So Dr. Park, thank you. Let's move on. Okay. 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 So, after
after PV isolation, uh, I, it was successful by first pass isolation. Uh, and then check the post ovulation voltage map. Okay, sometimes the it is hard to differentiate the uh, remaining far field appendage potential inside the primary vein. Then I measure the interval between distal CSPC, this is PC, and cha it change the position of a ring catheter to appendage. I measure the compare the the distance between PC artifact to the signal. If it is same in the appendage signal and the PB far field signal, it's okay. Sometimes we see the SVC far field potential. We differentiate by SVC PC. So we found, we confirmed every uh, whole pulmonary vein are isolated successfully without any touch of ablation. And then and I would like to emphasize the importance of isoproton provocation yes. because over 10% of AF trigger comes outside of primary vein. So isoproton uh, provocation and waiting their uh, base cut rate over 120 beat per minute and try to induce atrial fibrillation or atrial tachycardia uh, by rapid. Yeah, I, I gave a shot. The pacing uh, shorter than 120 millisecond maintaining atrial fibrillation two or three minutes and give an internal shot and we wait 10 over 10 minutes uh, waiting there's a, another immediate recurrence of atrial fibrillation or uh, frequent PVC. If there is mappable trigger, atrial PV trigger, we try to ablate uh, them all as much as possible. So even though it is long procedure, I uh, always try to uh, conduct isoprotonal provocation and uh, I, I would like to repeat the dosage of isoproton. I usually start from five mic per minute, but it depends on the patient uh, whether they are taking the beta block or not. So target heart rate is 120 beat per minute. So isoproton dosage increase from five mic to 20 mic. If it is uh, heart rate raised up to 120 beat per minute, I induce the atrial fibrillation or atrial tachycardia with high area rapid pacing until 120 milliseconds. And if the tachycardial fibrillation lasts uh, longer than three minutes, I give, give a shock, you saw, and they wait more than longer than 10 minutes, whether there is an APC or uh, AF trigger. If there's AF trigger, I try to ablate them all as much as possible. And uh... Before finishing the uh, procedure, I would like to uh, uh, recommend to ch check the cardiac silhouette. If the patient have a cardiac uh, tamponade or hemopericardium after going back to the general world, it can make a disaster. So please check the cardiac sil silhouette before finishing your procedure. Okay, so that is my the protocol to uh, detecting the extra PV uh, trigger and uh, uh, we wait uh, uh, 10 minutes before finishing the uh, procedure. Uh, improvement. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video clip uh, for the uh, AF catheter ablation. Uh, because of the development and uh, improvement of uh, catheter technology and mapping technology, AF procedure is easier and easier and shorter and shorter, but the number of patients increase. But please make sure AF catheter ablation is not completely safe procedure at all. Uh, sometimes you can make a big uh, mistake and uh, make patient into the, the risk condition. So please make sure and ensure your technology is perfect and uh, try to uh, imagine what is your limitation, what is the potential improvement point so okay so this is my the last part of a presentation about the how to uh, confirm the PB isolation okay dr yang please yeah thank you dr park very nice talk and uh, 
Uh, there is a question from our uh, audience. Uh, which side of the ridge between the appendage and the superior pulmonary vein do you ablate? Which side do you ablate on the appendage side? Both side. So I ablate uh, the uh, pulmonary vein side first. And then mm -hmm. during posterior isolation, if the aspergillus temperature increase, I move back to appendage posterior aspect and uh, another line. So like a sandwich, I ablate the uh, pulmonary vein side or pain side, both. Were you prolong the ablation uh, duration when, when you ablate the ridge? Uh, uh, ten, uh, 10 seconds. Only 10 uh, seconds? Yes. I, I'm using the 50 to 60 watt and 10 seconds. Uh -huh. mm. 10 seconds. Okay. So another question is how about uh, uh, post ablation atrial flutter uh, in your center after the ablation, the incidence of the atrial tachycardia? So during follow period or the immediate after PV isolation? Maybe both uh, the, in, the, in the acute procedure or the follow up? Yeah, acute, uh, after acute procedure, if we can induce the atrial tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, I don't care about that because we already reviewed all the, the register data and the cohort data and inducibility of uh, atrial fibrillation or tachycardia with aggressive pacing protocol doesn't uh, affect the long-term rhythm outcome. Even the, if somebody the, give a very strong current rapid pacing, uh, they can induce atrial fibrillation in my heart. So the long-term outcome was not different at the acute condition. But the isoprotonal provocation and the immediate trigger definitely affect the, uh, definitely increase the uh, recurrence rate. During follow-up period, the, uh, we studied what is the, the fact, uh, determinant, the presentation, recurrence presentation as atrial tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. If the patient has a remarkably remodeled atrium, huge atrium and low voltage, they generally recur as atrial fibrillation. But the relatively structured normal heart and the good voltage, small size LA, they recur as atrial tachycardia. Of course, the too much the linear ablation and the ablation gap can generate atrial tachycardia, but the, uh, I don't think the current technology is quite good. So the gap related atrial tachycardia is not, not that uh, frequent as uh, uh, we saw the pub previous publication, all the publication 10 years before. So most of patients with structural normal heart recurs as atrial tachycardia, but uh, it depends on the ablation line location. If you ablate the more osteo side, critical mass reduction effect is small, so atrial fibrillation can recur as atrial fibrillation. But if you make a bulking, debulking the enteral area, critical mass is smaller, then the recurrence pattern can be atrial tachycardia. In my the registry uh, data, the recurrence as atrial tachycardia is about the 36%. So probably, yeah, probably because I'm the, trying to update the more and more enteral side. So we discuss about a lot of discuss about the high pressure duration ablation. Uh, this current technology, uh, cannot apply to the osteo ablation directly. It is dangerous. So high pressure duration ablation is acceptable for the enteral side ablation because that area is thicker than the osteo. Mm -hmm. That is my opinion. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lee, uh, uh, Professor Lee, do you uh, eliminate all the atrial flutter during the atrial ablation? ablation? Yeah. Uh, the, because if the patients have the atrial flutter, maybe the patients have uh, the lenars, maybe the scar, maybe we think uh, we, we use the um, remapping and, uh, and uh, okay. And ablate, ablate the atrial flutter. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I think uh, I, I think uh, if the, the the this case is uh, the procedure is is very good. Thanks to thanks to Parker, uh, and I think uh, the the 
the kernel. Uh, because uh, we use uh, the two uh, puncture used uh, mapping, we found maybe we do uh, the, the, the isolation is the delay, not, a, not a, uh, isolation. Uh, we plus the kernel. The, the kernel maybe is easy, the, the isolation, the pulmonary vine. And I think if you if we if you use the the single uh, single puncture uh, use the mm -hmm. single catheter, and I think you you must do every patient you you show the the kernel because maybe the kernel maybe the success rate uh, is the pulmonary vein. And if we if you use the the two tools, you will mapping the circle circle at at uh, circle the the lasso, maybe we we found that um, maybe we do the 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 larger circle, uh, we 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 found, uh, and I think uh, every patient uh, you do the kernel. Yes, I think that the practice pattern is the different lab to lab, but the interesting uh, finding was we recently the reviewed the. Uh, single transeptal, single ablation catheter uh, outcome, and uh, ring catheter map to uh, ablation outcome. It is almost same, almost same. But the, actually, uh, if we analyze enterosmic drug-free uh, recurrence rate, the single transeptal group was better uh, statistically. I guess my expectation is uh, Operator know if there is he remain he or she remain a small gap, it's very difficult to isolate completely. Better than the harder than the, the ring catheter mapping status. So uh, operator psychologically try to concentrate and uh, ablate the PV isolation completely without gap. Uh, that is my uh, speculation. But the, so far the. The, we try to the, finish up the case uh, faster and the discharge a patient with a complication earlier. So we the ablate the same day and uh, one night after next morning, we discharge a patient uh, by using the single transeptal approach because the patient puncture on only one side, the right side groin. So patient is more, much more comfortable during the uh, blood stasis period in the general world. Uh, Dr. Buck, I have a question. Uh, uh, how about your experience uh, 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 in the patient with a redo case, recurrent uh, atrial fibrillation? How mm -hmm. about your recurrent atrial yeah. fibrillation mm -hmm. at a redo procedure? What's yeah. your workflow? For this kind of patient, yeah. Okay, so there is the in my the uh, registry the about thirty percent, thirty five to forty percent of patient uh, in came to the atrial fibrillation status on the table at the with the procedure, and mm -hmm. uh, about twenty five thirty percent atrial tachycardia. The remaining patient are sinus rhythm status at the with patient. So. I think the isoprotein provocation is most important. So uh, if the patient is AFib status, I give a shot and check the previous ablation line, especially pulmonary vein or linear ablation, fill the gap and complete the previous line, and then induce uh, atrial fibrillation or again and the isoprotermal and give a shot and uh, looking for the extra PV foci and try to ablate them all. Sinus group, same. The completion of a PB isolation and isoprotein provocation. If the patient sh uh, show up as a uh, uh, sustained atrial tachycardia, stable atrial tachycardia, we have a good uh, tool to map the uh, high density map uh, for the atrial mm -hmm. tachycardia. So I try mm -hmm. to map the atrial tachycardia and the terminate mm -hmm. atrial tachycardia with minimal ablation mm -hmm. and then fill up the, all the previous ablation lesion gap, and then isoprotein provocation. So 
less common pathway is always the extra PV trigger uh, ablation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So could you, uh, uh, final question from our audience uh, is about uh, uh, what's the duration of each spot in the carina ablation? What's the duration of each lesion in the carina? Because oh. the carina is difficult. Carina, uh, you, you, we have to uh, think about the risk of PB stenosis. So I, I don't uh, <laughs> the give a message to give a long duration ablation at the carina. If it is the, there is potential, I move uh, less than, I give a, a 30 watt energy, less than 20 seconds in the carina region and move. If there is some potential, I pad and the 3D map and move, 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 and finish up the carinal lesion. Uh, the, my goal is not the complete ablation of carina. Then we can looking for where is the leaking point from the carina potential area and uh, pull back clockwise, counterclockwise torque and uh, looking for the where is the leaking point and the intra ablation lesion. If there is a, some the delineate lesion uh, along the ablation line, we give a more burn. So I don't try to ablate inside the pulmonary vein as much I, as I can. And, but the, the carina potential is a very uh, important message, important uh, surrogate marker to find out the ablation gap of intra side. Yes. So don't and give I, it I, too much long energy on the carina. <laughs> yes, uh, longer time, high power is dangerous, mm. high risk. So, uh, it's time fast to fly. Uh, we have to uh, uh, go to the end of this session. Dr. Lee, have, do you have any other comment about this There's section? No, no, your comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I have to say very, very nice uh, course about the atrial fibrillation, uh, about the pulmonary wing isolation. Uh, Dr. Park, uh, share his experience, very, very good experience about the, the how to reconstruct the geometry, how to do the pulmonary ring, move the catheter, and uh, how to make good contact and some special uh, shape of the catheter. And uh, Dr. Lee and uh, other uh, uh, panelists have shared uh, their experience I think uh, all our audience could have learned about uh, a lot from the, the course. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Park. And uh, Dr. Lee, also thank you, Dr. Lee, Dr. Park. And uh, next week we have uh, a topic. Another topic is uh, focused on the persistent atrial fibrillation. And uh, we have uh, the, the same uh, panelists, uh, we will talk about uh, uh, how to do the uh, ablation in the persistent K AF cases. So welcome, uh, looking forward to our next course. So thank you, Dr. Park, Dr. Lee, and thank you uh, all the audience on the website. Thank you all. Let's close our uh, course this time. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Keep in touch. Give in touch, yes. not a lot. Bye -bye.